I'm Gary Gardner. Um, thanks all for being here. I know we all have basketball to watch, but it was <laughs> <laughs> um, not, not one team. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah, so the past few months I've been working with uh, Michelle Meadows, another student, and Dr. Steve Nelson um, on uh, this project. And we've been looking at heavy metal soil contaminants in Tooele, Utah. Uh, we've also been working with the Tooele County Department of Health the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency and Anderson Engineering Company Incorporated. Um, for those of you who don't know where Tooele is, it's just to the northwest of us, um, one fault block over in the, the Basin and Range province, um, just south of the Great Salt Lake. Um, and, okay, so the soil uh, on the outskirts of Tooele has been contaminated um, by the uh, by operations at the International Smelting and Refining Superfund site. And this was a copper and lead smelting facility that operated uh, from 1910 to 1973 and produced a lot of tailings and slag during that time. And all of this material was uh, transported down Pine Canyon and stored right here. Um, this little, this, uh, this uh, tailings pile. And uh, as part of the tailings impoundment, there were uh, ponds that, uh, there were uh, smelting ponds. Um, and in the water there was uh, high amounts of arsenic and lead and, and other metals. and uh, Episodically, these ponds would overflow out onto um, the lowlands out here and uh, carry these metals and put them into the soil. And um, so what, there, there have been previous soil studies that uh, looked at the general area and found lead and arsenic contaminations on the order of a thousand parts per million lead and a hundred and um, 150 parts per million arsenic. And the purpose of our current study was to look at these two properties in particular. Um, we have the uh, Nix property down here to the south and the Scout property up here to the north. And our goal was to increase the sampling density for these properties um, in order to, to look at specific, or at the, at the contamination in these specific properties um, and to uh, identify hot spots where there is particularly high contamination and we also have been leaching tests to determine the, the mobility of the uh, heavy metal contaminants and then we've also sampled at depth to, de to determine how deep the contamination has gone in these soils. <coughs> Our sampling procedures were fairly simple. We use a stainless steel bucket hand auger that we drill down into the soil. And in between samples, we clean the bucket with alkanox bleach and distilled water to prevent cross contamination. And we sampled at three depths. Um, we, we initially sampled, um, this was before I came onto the project, but initially it, well, we took samples at the surface um, at each location. And then I came along later and sampled at a depth of zero to nine inches and, uh, and also at nine to 18 inches at each location. Okay. To analyze our samples, we used x-ray fluorescence. And so to prepare our samples, we dried them first of all. And then they were sifted through a 10 millimeter sieve. Uh, they were crushed and homogenized in, in a tungsten carbide shadow box. And we prepared glass discs, as you see here, for uh, major element analysis and press pellets for trace element analysis. And we did LO, LOI tests um, were used to account for the organic material. <coughs> To um, ensure the precision and accuracy of our instruments, we use a standard, um, a 
uh, provided by the National Institute of Standards and Technologies. And this consisted of a Montana contaminated soil uh, that was blended with lead oxide. And, uh, and with each batch of samples, we ran a sample of the standard. And uh, it turned out that our measurements were fairly close with a very small uh, margin of error compared to what the actual values are. And also, we had a relatively small standard de deviation. Uh, so um, we're fairly confident, we're extremely confident that our measurements were precise and accurate for the values. <coughs> OK. So our initial uh, surface contamination contour maps were done um, by using um, the, the values from each location. We, were, we made a raster on an ArcGIS and then contoured the, the raster based on, uh, on what our numbers. And we found a fairly high contamination in the mixed property uh, on the order of uh, up to 2,000 parts per million in lead, um, as you can see in the contours here, and, and over 200 parts per million arsenic. The Scout Ranch property, we didn't see nearly the, the level of, of contamination. So, uh, so, so the rest of our studies focus mainly on the next property to the south. And so that was surface contouring, or the surface samples. <coughs> Our leaching tests um, showed that showed that once in once the, the the metals were in the soil, they didn't really move very much. They stayed right where they were for the most part. Um, so, based on that, we expected there to not be very much contamination at at a greater depth. So, but to, to confirm that, we did our depth. Uh, we analyzed our depth samples. And the numbers are pretty small here, so I'm sorry about that. But uh, we did find much greater contamination at the surface, uh, particularly for lead, um, and also particularly on the, on the perimeter. For arsenic, we found a similar thing, much greater uh, contamination on the perimeter, and also much greater contamination um, at the 0 to 9 inch interval than at the 9 to 18 inch. Now this one is particularly interesting. By dividing the numbers for uh, 0 to 9 inches by the our numbers for 9 to 18 inches, we, uh, we, we calculated surface enrichment factors. And we found that particularly for lead, there was a zone, a, kind of a transect going from northwest to southeast of particularly uh, high surface enrichment. Uh, if, if you look on the perimeter, we have numbers of 2, 4, 6 right there. But then right through the middle here, you have these high values of 10, 12, 16, um, and those kinds of numbers. So um, it's interesting to note that we have higher contamination, or higher surface enrichment in along that zone. <clears throat> so based on our numbers, um, the, uh, the action limit for lead and arsenic um, is 100 parts per million for arsenic and 500 parts per, per million for lead. And the scout property to the north uh, was below the limits for most of the locations. But the next property was above the action limit in several locations, so remediation is required. And the remediation sh should definitely be conducted um, at a depth of nine inches and possibly greater depending on what the EPA decides best, but at least nine inches. Um, 
And in summary, we found um, that so we we found surface enrichment um, for arsenic on the fact that on the order of two to eight that by a factor of two to eight for arsenic and two to sixteen uh, for lead. And even though the, there are still uh, higher concentrations of lead and arsenic um, at the 9 to 18 inch depth, and we determined that we figured that that was probably more likely due to the, the initial saturation of the soil and not due to, to the mobility of the elements. <coughs> and the trend of high lead surface enrichment from northwest to southeast is probably due to a difference in the mineralogy. And uh, we would like to conduct future experiments with, with XRD or the scanning electron microscope to determine that. You didn't yeah. tell us what you did your leachate experiment with. Was it just tap water, or what did you um, what did you leach with? So that was actually before I came onto the project. But I, I, I think I don't really know what they did that with. Um, it, they, they, the, we followed the um, EPA uh, total contaminant leaching protocol. Basically, eighteen hour um, leach in a pH 5 buffered uh, aqueous solution. Okay. The question I was going to pester you with is if the stuff was mobile enough to get washed out there in the first place was in the solution, but yet you're not leaching it out, do you kind of think there was maybe a difference between the original fluid that went out there and what you're leaching it with? Um, I mean, how did it get there in the first place? Uh, I, it could be, but it, it, it might also be due to um, being, being in place in the soil and then um, being, being attached to <coughs> certain minerals in the soil that, that would put kind of leaching. Um, but I well, I'm, I'm setting you up here. I mean, the, those, those ponds, because of the sulfides, can have a pH of 2 or less. Okay. So, so it was probably very acidic stuff that got washed out there in the first place. And then it becomes more. And so if we were to take the same soil and hit it with very acidic, a strong acid, we could probably not. We would move those elements around. Okay. So. Any other questions? Yeah. You mentioned already, I kind of missed it. Did you, did you look into the source of the contamination? Um, well, we're we're fairly sure that it was from from the tailing site and the the mine operations because there really isn't anything else in the area that would have that that high arsenic or, or lead or 